internet. Welcome back to Mutton Shop Gaming. I'm the Mutton Shop Gamer, and today we're going to be taking a look at Payday 2. Now this game was given to me by a very generous benefactor on Steam, and since every video I've seen on the game always has you playing online with other people, I decided to invite him in, and we played the game together for the sake of this video. Now, is it a good game? Is it a bad game? Well, let's take a look at Payday 2. The game starts out confusingly. There's an opening cutscene, but after reading the Wikipedia page, it sounds like the dentist thing is supposed to happen later. All I can tell is that you are part of a four-man group in Washington, D.C. looking to get rich through crime. You do this with smash and grabs, bank robberies, or taking jobs from bigger criminals, which includes stealing guns from rivals or even hitting FBI bureaus to find information. On top of that, the game seems to just throw you in. Now, I know the game was made for people who liked the last game, but there's no easing in for new players. All these names are just thrown at you when you aren't being introduced to them. They're telling you what they are called, but not who they are. I feel like I sat down in a movie halfway through and I don't know any of these characters or plot elements. I mean, what little I understood got me to play through the game, but rather than the sequel being its own experience, like Left 4 Dead 2 was, it basically demands you have played the first one. Aesthetics-wise, I enjoy the music of the game, but I don't remember any of it. This is a pretty common problem in most games, and while I almost feel I should lower my standards for video game music, so many games have done it right over the years that I have to question why developers aren't striving for it. I don't even remember if there was a main theme for the game to be paired with. Visually speaking, the graphics and color palette are pretty good. Sure, they're not current gen, and by current gen I mean 8th generation because using the term next gen to describe the console generation containing the Wii U, the PlayStation 4, and the Xbox One is stupid, but the graphics hold up. They remind me of Source games like Portal 2 and Half-Life 2. However, they do have one significant problem. Look at how many words there are! At least for me as a newbie, all this text overloaded and confused me. In fact, I just learned to ignore it as I played onward unless it flashed in the middle of the screen. It made me feel bad though because I kept feeling that the game wanted me to take in all this information at once, but I refused because I wanted to enjoy the gameplay. And you know what? The gameplay is really solid. I'm serious, and the faults the game had in not helping new players understand it are forgiven when you get into the gameplay itself. It makes itself look confusing on the surface with all the text and menus, but it's how you play the game that really makes it shine. You can operate with stealth or make a big bang, depending on your playstyle. My group, which was the benefactor, myself, and two <coughs> special AI partners, ended up doing things loudly. You can also customize your clothing and weapons, and even pick from, like, a ton of different masks. It kind of reminds me of TF2. However, as soon as I discovered I had an Obama mask, I decided to stick with that. After all, what could strike fear more into the hearts of men than Barack Obama? The gameplay is varied. You escort a truck with a prison escapee, you steal goods from other gangs, you work to escape a ton of cops, you set up drills to rob banks of money and gold, you tell hostages to get down on the ground, and a bit more. If you end up being arrested, you can either wait a few minutes to be let out, or a partner can take an officer hostage to negotiate your immediate release. During your time under arrest, you can follow players around, kind of like other online shooters. Oh yeah, you get to shoot so many law enforcers in your quest to gain epic loot. Problem is, civilians have this little habit of getting in the way of your bullets or grenades. If you're arrested or kill civilians, you lose part of your share at the end of the job. One of the more frustrating elements of the game is the fact that you have to do everything multiple times. The drill broke down, started again. Only one of these computers has the information you need. Get to hacking each one until you find it. Try one of all of the keys you picked up to open these gates. This evidence didn't have the DNA you needed. Get another box of stuff. Another element that may or may not be frustrating, depending on the situation, is the AI. Why won't these get down when I'm demanding them to? While friendly AI won't carry anything or just won't help you when you need it or will let cops just walk around them to kill you, the enemy AI can be a big barrel of fun. The cops only go after the crooks doing more damage, so you could potentially walk around them without them noticing until they're too late and just kill them all, assuming your gun is loaded. 
Yeah, if you get interrupted while reloading, it doesn't continue or restart automatically reloading. You have to hit the reload button every time, and it's a bit embarrassing when you hit the fire button with a cop in your sights to find that you're out of bullets. Other games allow you to automatically reload all the time, so I don't know why Payday decided to be different. Not to mention everything in the game has a wait time. Wait to pick up a bag. Wait to fill a bag. Wait to restart a drill. I find it weird because yes, I know it goes against the flow of the game and it's crying to go faster paced, but all of this is done for the sake of tension and realism. This kind of thing in real life would take time and make you impatient, and I can totally understand why they'd want to capture that in the game. I honestly don't know what to think about it though. It makes gameplay feel that is pretty unique in that it's a game about stealing with a high amount of action and strategy together. Alright, in single player, this game gets a C-. There are still all those issues that I mentioned near the end, they don't really teach you how to play the game as much, and there are those AI issues, so if you're playing by yourself, it's a C-. By yourself, remind you. If you're playing with friends, it will happily help you learn how to play the game, and you'll actually have a fun time. That way, you get a B- game. Because you know what? Once you get the hang of it, and if you're playing with friends and not the AI, you'll have a ton of fun with this game. But if you're by yourself and you don't know how to play it or you don't have enough friends to teach you how to play it and they're not going to get pissed off at you when you don't know how to play, I'd recommend skipping it, honestly. Alright, that's it, and I'll see you all next week.